Praise the Lord. I pray you will not fall. You will not fail. And you will not sleep away from the solid rock in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day of joy, a day of happiness, a day of satisfaction, a day of fulfillment, and a day of reassurance. And therefore, Lord, we pray that everyone within, without, everywhere, as we listen to God, to your word today, we're asking, O oh Lord, you'll establish everyone. Amen. I pray, Lord, those who are shaking or those who have been moved by circumstances of life, you help everyone to be established upon the rock of ages in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to every heart right now. I will pray, Lord, you will strengthen us by the word you speak to everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. We're looking at the Psalms, Psalm 61, Psalm 62, and Psalm 63. I want you to look at Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. Verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I than I. Psalm 62, we're reading from verse 2. It says, He only is my rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, and He, this God, the eternal one, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 7, in verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory. This is the word again, my rock, the rock of my strength. And my refuge is in God. In Psalm 63, verse 3, it tells us in Psalm 63, looking at verse 3 there, because thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness, thy mercy, the goodness, thy affection is better than all forms of life. My lips shall praise thee. Today we're looking at these psalms and the topic we're dealing with is the believers uplift to higher ground for God's glory. The believer. The one that believes in the Lord. The Psalms use the word trust and confidence. You have confidence in the Lord. He's your only Savior. There is no salvation in any other, but in this Christ, the rock of ages, you have trust in Him, confidence in Him, and you believe. You're a believer. You believe now, and you keep on believing. And whatever circumstance become upon your life, you're still a believer inside out in your heart or your leaves you are a believer there is an uplift he lifts you up you might be in the valley it will lift you up you might be in any deep uh, stress or distress today and always the lord will lift you up in jesus name and then it says to higher ground David, who wrote uh, this psalm, who preached this psalm, he had seen himself in the valley 
of despondency and then he came to the rock he came on high he was lifted up to higher ground and that was his prayer all the time that should be your prayer all the time no matter what level of blessing you have and no matter the joy the satisfaction you have in the Lord it should still be Lord lead me to the rock that is higher than I and then it says when that happens and as that continues to happen he'll be praising the Lord he'll be glorifying the Lord so that everything in his life will be for the glory of God that's why we're looking at the message believers uplift to higher ground for God's glory three points we're looking at in the message number one as we look at this message one two and three we have three points we're looking at and the three points we have number one our passionate plea and pursuit of higher ground our passionate plea when my heart is overwhelmed when troubles overwhelm me when challenges overwhelm my life lead me to the rock that is higher than i our plea passionate plea our pursuit passionate pursuit of higher ground number two the personal possession of power from the most high god the god who has called us and the God who has saved us and the God that brings us into his kingdom into his presence is the most high God higher than all the gods of the earth is the living God is the mighty God is the omnipotent God is the omnipresent God and wherever you find yourself that God is always there and whatever problem or challenge you might have that God is able to solve the problem and he gives you the personal possession of the power of your father who is in heaven the power that you have the power that you possess in a personal way from the most high god number three is a perpetual praise everywhere there is something in our life to praise god for every day there is something you are praising god for perpetually always every day every time in your life and in every situation our perpetual praise which progress towards the highest good that means as you have come to the lord and god is good and because god is good and you share of his nature you also you're good and you do good and every step of your life you are being led and you are making progress towards the highest good you can do and the highest good you can be for the community around for your family for your community and for the nation a perpetual praise with progress towards the highest good number one we're looking at number one now and number one is our passionate plea and pursuit of higher ground if you're going to pursue the higher ground you'll not be looking down all the time looking at the valley all the time looking at your past failure all the time and looking at your weakness all the time there must be a positive desire a positive passion that you want to labor for higher ground and that you want to scale the higher ground you want to mount up to higher ground there is submission you're saying why am i alive why am i here today i'm here today because i see something high i see something great i see something beyond my uh, my present achievement and i want to aim high and you are passionately pleading and praying and you're passionately pursuing that higher ground you will reach there in jesus name you'll not always be where you are now higher ground will be your constant aim 
higher ground will be the place that you are going to reach and you are going to get to in Jesus' name. Our passionate plea and pursuit of higher ground. Look at Psalm 61 and I'm reading from verse 1 and verse 2. Psalm 61 verse 1, hear my cry. Look at the king. The king is saying, I cry, but I don't cry to man. I'm crying to God. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. And then he says in verse 2, in verse 2, from the edge of the earth, anywhere I am, Saul might have driven me to the very edge of the earth. Circumstances and the winds that blow might have driven me to the edge of the earth. And from that end of the earth will I cry unto thee, like Jonah cried unto the Lord in the depth of the sea. Anywhere I am, I'll cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed when I don't know what I'm going to do again, when it appears that the waters of trouble and the waters of trial will overwhelm me and submerge me and I cannot raise my head, it says when I am overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Now, as you think about that sentence, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I want you to understand that when you come to the New Testament, all those apostles, when they were preaching, they were preaching before the New Testament was written. All the had was the Old Testament. And from that Old Testament, anywhere they went, they found Christ. And now, as you look at the rock, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, you will see the rock that the New Testament believers understand, the rock that is higher than I. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, they did all drink the same spiritual drink. Talking about the children of Israel as they went through the wilderness and water came out of the rock. Those Israelites, three million of them or even more, they all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock capital R, of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock, everybody tell me there, tell me out aloud, and that rock was Christ. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ is the rock. The rock was Christ. The water came out of the rock for them. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, Jesus Christ, higher than all the kings of the earth. Jesus Christ, the rock, higher than all the, all the governments of the world. Jesus Christ, higher than all founders of religions in the world. Jesus Christ, higher than anyone and everyone because the Father has appointed him that in him shall all fullness dwell. Lead me to that rock because there is water that comes out of the rock the water of salvation because except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot see the kingdom of God he come he tells us whosoever will let him come and take the water of life freely it is from that rock the Lord Jesus Christ that the water of life will come out eternal life comes out and then after that if you have got the water of life you are born again you are a child of God you don't stop there lead me higher lead me higher because he will cleanse and sanctify them through the washing of the water by the word and the word I speak unto you their life 
and their spirit he is our sanctifier and he is the one that will cleanse us and purge us and purify us after we are saved lead me to the rock that is higher than I after you've got the water of life and then the water of cleansing the water of sanctification and then it says whoever is thirsty let him come unto me and drink for as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water this is said concerning the spirit that will come upon those who are saved and sanctified when Jesus Christ is glorified and now Jesus Christ is glorified and therefore he has poured out a spirit upon the people and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost because the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call it's the water that is represented there life eternal life in abundance and life sanctified life purified life and the life of power the power of the Holy Ghost upon you that's why every time you come to the Lord and you say Lord thank you for what you have given me thank you for what I have but lead me to the rock that is higher than I look at Psalm 81 Psalm 81 we're reading from verse 16 in Psalm 81 reading from verse 16 he should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey out of the rock should he have satisfied thee lead me to the rock after he has satisfied us with water salvation with water cleansing water sanctification with water the water rivers of water coming out of our heart of the holy ghost then there is honey out of the rock my joy i give unto you and not as the world giveth but joy i give unto you i've spoken this is to you that your joy may be full and that your joy will remain as you come to the lord and he lifts you up to the rock that is higher than you are he says he'll give water out of the rock he'll give honey out of the rock your life will never be the same again in jesus name look at let's come back to psalm 61 we're looking at verses 3 and 4 in psalm 61 verse 3 for thou hast been a shelter for me thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy this rock becomes your protection and it becomes your security and then it says it's a strong tower look at uh, proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 the strong tower that's who jesus is the strong tower that's who the lord is the strong tower that's who your savior is and in proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 the name of the lord is a strong tower he has given us that name and he said whatever you ask in my name is in your hands it's whatever you want it's your desire it's the promise of god becoming practical in your life whatever you ask in my name i will give unto you and then he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name that's the name that is the strong tower in my name they cast out devils and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them your life is secured my life it was said my life is secured my life is protected the name you have look at that proverbs 18 and verse 10 the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous runneth into it and is saved your life will be saved your life will be secured and nothing will hurt your life in jesus name 
and then let's come back to Psalm 61 and I'm reading from verse 5 in Psalm 61 we're looking at verse 5 for thou O God has heard my vows thou O God has heard my vows thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name you have an inheritance I have an inheritance you have a possession I have a possession the children the children of Jacob will possess their possession and the believers in Christ our time has come I said my time has come you will possess your possession in Jesus name but you know, you know, you cannot just come to God empty-handed. You say, I make a vow. I give my life. He's been asking you and pursuing you all the time. My son, give me your heart. And then you bring your heart, you bring your life, you bring everything there is in you, and you offer to the Lord, for thou, O God, hast heard my vow. It's on the basis of that you've heard my vow and you know it's sincere. You've seen my commitment. You've seen my consecration and you know it is sincere. That's why you now give me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, Psalm 61 verse 8, so will I sing a praise unto thy name forever. How long are you going to sing unto the Lord? I said, how long are you going to sing to the Lord? You sing here on earth, and then you will get to heaven to continue your singing. I didn't hear your amen. So, will I sing praise unto thy name forever? Look at this, that I may daily perform my vows that i may daily perform my vows how important are vows before the lord look at jonah jonah chapter 2 we're reading from verses 9 and 10 jonah chapter 2 we're reading from verse 9 but i will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving remember it was in the belly of the whale in the belly of a big fish that swallowed him up remember he was breathing inside that belly of the whale with difficulty remember there was no food to be served there he was hungry and all those wet salt a part of the whale surrounded him and yet he said even in that condition i will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving look at this I will pay that that I have vowed. I will pay that that I have vowed. There is a vow of the prophet. And Jonah was a prophet. And as a prophet, he had vowed to the Lord. As a prophet, as a preacher, as a pastor, every prophet, every preacher, every pastor ought to vow to the Lord. I will go where you want me to go. I will do what you want me to do. I will say, I will preach what you tell me to preach. I will not be afraid of any man, of any city, of even Nineveh, anywhere you send me, I will go. That's the vow of the prophet. But then the challenge came to him, go to Nineveh and tell them, 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He was afraid. He forgot his vow. That's why you know the story. The whale swallowed him up. But now he said, God, I'm coming back to pay my vow and to fulfill my commitment and to perform my consecration. I will pay that that i have vowed salvation is of the lord look at what follows in verse 10 and the lord speak unto the fish 
Jonah was the one delaying his own deliverance. Jonah was the one delaying his freedom and liberty. But the moment he realized and he said, Salvation is of the Lord, I will pay that that I have vowed. The Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Whatever has swallowed you up will give you up today. Whatever swallowed up your success, whatever swallowed up your joy, whatever swallowed up your liberty, whatever swallowed up your progress in Christ, everything will vomit you out today in Jesus' name. You will hit the land and you will start running. I said you will start running. Where are you? I will run. I will run, and then I will pay that that I have vowed. New life will come to you. New strength will come to you. New power will come to you. Every chain that binds you broken today. Every cord that binds you broken today. Because now new life has come and you will experience and you will express that new life in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now is the personal possession of power from the most high God. The personal possession from the most high God. We're looking at Psalm 62. And I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 62, reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1, Truly, truly, there is no pretense, there is no hypocrisy, there is no cover up, and there is uh, nothing that is just like me believe truly, sincerely, from the death of my heart. My soul waited upon God, from him cometh my salvation. Saul will not catch me. I said Saul will not catch me. Say it for yourself, Saul will not catch me. Enemies will not catch me. Pandemic will not catch me. Evil will not get to my door. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, He only is my rock. I don't have any juju. He only is my rock. I don't have any talisman. He only is my rock. I don't have any occultic dependence. He only is my rock. I don't have any night, eh, papa, any night, mama, that I go to that will rub my stomach and rub anything on me. He only, the God of heaven, is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. He will defend you. The great attorney and the great lawyer, the great advocate that never lost any battle, he will defend you. From the accusation of Satan, he will defend you. From the accusation of liars, he will defend you. From the accusation of past transgression, he will defend you. Because he is my defense, I shall not be greatly moved. You will not be moved in Jesus' name. He is my rock and he is my salvation. He is my rock and he is my salvation. How does it become our salvation today? How do we receive? How do we have the salvation from the Lord today? How can that be made available to anyone? If somebody asks you, the salvation you are talking about, you've got it, I can see it in your life. I can hear it from your voice. I can see it from the way you live. How can I have the same 
salvation that you have got so that this rock will also be my rock look at romans chapter 10 in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 9 romans chapter 10 reading from verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus if you will confess with your mouth because that's what i did i confessed with my mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart you believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved tell your neighbor that's how they can get saved tell your friends that's how they can get saved that with your mouth you confess and with your heart you believe that christ died for our sins on the cross of calvary and the father god in heaven has laid on him the iniquity of us all every sin you ever committed since you were born whether you committed it intentionally or you committed it carelessly or you committed it just like copying paper it says he has laid all our iniquity upon him and because of that now you accept that that it's what for you he died and that he rose again thou shalt be saved give me a good amen, amen. look at verse 10 in verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness as you believe your sin is transferred unto christ your sin bearer and his righteousness is transferred unto you and you believe that with your heart the power to live a righteous life will become yours immediately and then you will say once i was a sinner but now i'm a christian a new creature in christ once i was blind but now i can see once i was weak and whenever temptation came i just fell to that temptation but now i am strong let the weak say say it again because he transfers his righteousness unto you and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that salvation will abide in your life and everywhere you go you will manifest that salvation in jesus name Let, let's come back now to psalm 62 i'm reading from verse 5 psalm 62 we're reading from verse 5 it says in psalm 62 verse 5 my soul can you see the psalmist is always saying my soul you know some people they say i don't have a prayer partner talk to your soul you know we can put it this way give yourself a pep talk pep talk before you go out of the house if you're feeling down if you're feeling lonely if you're feeling weak if you're feeling downtrodden then and then your soul inside you is like it's falling almost falling out of your body then you speak to your soul you say my soul wake up my soul god is my rock my soul god is my salvation my soul Wait thou only upon God. And as you talk to yourself like that, whatever other people talk to you will not take hold in your life in Jesus' name. You and Christ will have the final say. I said you and Christ will have the final say. The Lord is speaking to your soul and you pick that word that the Lord is speaking to your soul and you speak it to yourself. The Lord says, I am strong, my soul, you are strong. The Lord says, I am healed, by his stripes I am healed, my body, you are healed. You didn't say that to yourself. And every good thing that the Lord has pronounced concerning you, you pronounce it for yourself. My soul, Psalm 62 verse 5, my soul, wait thou upon God for my expectation is from him. Anybody have an expectation there? I said anybody have an expectation there? 
that expectation is coming from him expectation from heaven expectation from god expectation from the throne and that expectation will not be disappointed in jesus name look at look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us he only is my rock and my salvation and he is my defense i shall not be moved i shall not be moved where is the brother where is the sister that shall not be moved where you stand nothing will move you where you're praising the lord nothing will move you your confidence in the lord and your testimony of his goodness in your life nothing will move you and the people the people that think you know i'm, I'm going to tell him something i know his secret i know her secret all the bad things she did 20 years ago 30 years ago i'm going to kind of puncture his balloon her balloon and then he comes to say that whatever is that that is saying all your sins of the past that are forgiven god has put them in the depth of the sea and they will never be remembered against you anymore in jesus name neither do i condemn you go and sin no more and if Christ has not condemned you, if the Father has not condemned you, and the grace of God has come into your life, no condemnation in your life in Jesus' name. You will not be moved. I will not be moved. We shall not be moved because our expectation is from him. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, in God is my salvation not in my feeling in god is my salvation my glory the rock of my strength and my refuge is in god my refuge is in god the avenger of blood will not touch your life look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says trust in him at all times trust in him at all times when things are tough when things are difficult when the clouds are in the sky when there is darkness everywhere when you don't know when to turn he knows the way and he knows your life trust in him at all times how many times are you going to trust in the lord when are you going to trust in the lord how often are you going to trust in the lord when you're sick, trust in the Lord. When you're oppressed, trust in the Lord. When you're challenged, trust in the Lord. When the waters overwhelm you, trust in the Lord. When it appears there is pain in all areas of your body, trust in the Lord. He is your healer, Jehovah Rapha. He will heal you in Jesus' name. You people pour out your heart before him pour out your heart before him how do you do that like you did when you went to a friend and then you were talking and talking and talking you are pouring out your heart come back now and transfer that action before the lord and pour out your heart before the lord how do you pour out your heart when you see a mother who, who, who loves you or you see a father who loves you or you see your husband and then you bottle that thing in from the office or from your in-laws and then you see that person that you trust that you know will sympathize with you and you talk and you talk and you talk and you pour out your heart before him transfer that to the lord and come before the lord he will have mercy on you he will have compassion on you he will take care of you and pour out your heart before him god is a refuge for us and he will answer your prayer i said he will answer your prayer look at psalm 27 verse 1 psalm 27 we're looking at verse 1 the lord is my light your light will shine all that darkness will vanish away 
the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it tells us one thing. Have I desired of the Lord? And that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. How many days of your life? All the days of my life. And behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, when the dearest people on earth to me, when they forsake me, when the most precious and the most uh, the people I'm acquainted with the most in my life, I can see them. And yet I'm in deep trouble and they have all forsaken me. But praise the Lord, somebody higher than mother, somebody higher than father, somebody higher than friend, somebody higher than neighbors. The Lord will take me up. The Lord will take you up. It will wipe those tears away from your eyes. It will take that sorrow from your heart. It will take that pain and agony from your system. The Lord will take you up in Jesus' name. Today, the Lord will take you up. He will meet your need. He will give himself completely unto you. Your life will come up again from the valley in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. Verse 14, it says, wait on the Lord. That's the secret. The Lord is going to take you up and the Lord is waiting for you. And the Lord is searching for you. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Courage will come back again. Backbone will come back again. Stamina will come back again. And the strength to live a new life will come back again. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord, your time has come. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm reading from verse 31, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. New life will come. Revival will come. Renewal will come. Regeneration, reformation will come. Every weakness will pass away from your life in Jesus' name. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Who are those people? They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. I said they shall run and not be weary. I feel like running. Do you feel like running? As we have been sitting down for a long time, and then it's like, am I going to go forward? Do I want to do anything anymore? What does life hold? Don't, don't bother me. I just want to stay here until Christ will come. I'm managing to live. Now I feel like running. That strength and power to run will come to your life in Jesus' name. A positive desire to run, a passionate desire to run, a purposeful desire to run, you will run the race. You will climb every mountain. You will cross every ocean. And everything, discouragement that tied you down, everything, all the yoke will be broken in your life in Jesus' name. And the passion to run, the Lord will give you once again in Jesus' name. He says, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk, tell me, and not faint. Now, I research a verse for you that I want you to mark in your Bible. And then to be watching for the fulfillment. Will you? 
Look at Psalm 138, and I'm reading from verse 8. Underline this, and be watching for the fulfillment, because this good thing will be fulfilled in your life. Amen. Psalm 138, verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Can you say that with me? The Lord will perfect that which concerning me. Every crooked thing will be straightened out. Every failure will be turned to success. The feet will be turned to conquering. You will be a hero in your generation. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hand. The Lord will not forsake you. His promise will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number three now. Point number three is our perpetual praise with progress towards the highest good. We're coming to Psalm 63 and we're reading from verse 1. Psalm 63 verse 1, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, to see thy power, you will see God's power. And thy glory, you'll see the glory of God. So have I seen thee in the sanctuary. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. My lips shall praise thee. My lips shall praise thee. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Did you see there it said, My lips shall praise thee. Some people do not know the power of praise. They are forgotten Joshua and the children of Israel. They were about to possess their possession and go in to the land of promise. You'll possess your possession. You will go into the land of promise. But there were Jericho walls that would have hindered them and the Lord said, don't talk, don't say anything, go around those Jericho walls once a day. But don't say anything negative, don't say, how will this wall come down? Don't say, how will this mountain come down? Don't say, how are we going to possess? Don't say, after all, all these walls are higher than what we have ever seen before. I've never seen any wall. I've never seen any hindrance as terrible as this before. Don't say that. And then, on the seventh day, go around. Seven is for perfection. Go around again. Perfection is coming in your life. Then go around again. And after that, that while the walls are still standing shout hallelujah shout praise the Lord you are not shouting shout praise the Lord the praise of God was seen in their mouth before the walls came down as you are praising the Lord you wake up in the morning and you feel that pain at the back there while the pain is there praise the Lord everybody say hallelujah while you are praising the Lord all the pain will vanish away something is going around they call pandemic it has touched that place and touched that place don't say don't say anything don't say it's getting to me it will never get to you all you do praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord let the praise of god be in your mouth and pandemic will never knock at your door 
and then Paul and Silas, you know, their feet, they were still in the stalks, and their hands were still bound, and they were in the dungeon. It was all dark, and then Paul and Silas, in that condition, instead of saying, why this now? Is that the result of preaching the gospel? Is that the result of doing good? We cast out that evil spirit from that uh, damsel, and this is uh, the result now. Oh God, where are you? They didn't complain, I will never complain. They didn't eat murmur, I will never murmur. And then it says, Paul and Silas sang praise unto the Lord while they were singing. The foundation of their prison was shaking. The foundation of your prison is shaking already. And all the bands that, that bound them, everything was loose while they were still praising the Lord. And then all their doors are open. Open doors before you. I said, open doors before you. Where there was no way before, you'll find a way. Where there was no progress before, you will find progress. And you will move in and possess your possession. And then in the morning, that's Acts chapter 16, the magistrates that put them in prison, nobody went to give them money, nobody went to plead, but heaven touched them, the hands of the kings, then the hands of the Lord, and eternity each whithersoever you will. Those magistrates said, go tell those men, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. And Paul, the apostle, said, go tell them themselves to come and fetch us out here. Look at that. Victory. He was more than a conqueror. After singing and praising the Lord, he was more than a conqueror. Don't cry again. Praise the Lord. Don't weep again. Praise the Lord. Don't be sorrowful again. Praise the Lord. If you know how to sing, sing unto the Lord. Sing a solo and the angels will join you. And all your prison doors, they'll be open in Jesus' name. We're coming now to Psalm 63. And I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 63, reading from verse 5, is telling us, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. Your year of satisfaction has come. Your year of fulfilled promises has come. It shall come to pass. I said in your life, in your family, it shall come to pass. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. And then in verse 6, it tells us in verse 6, When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. Verse 7 then tells us, Because thou hast been my help, it will be your help, it will be your supporter, it will be your provider. Thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Who is rejoicing there? I said, who is rejoicing there? And your joy, nothing will take away from you in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 8, in verse 8, My soul followeth hard after thee. I want more of God. I want more of the grace of God, more of the strength of God, more of the power of God, more of confidence and trust in the Lord. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Thy right hand upholdeth me. And then it is so that you'll keep on doing good and doing good and goodness will never leave your life in Jesus' name. Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, we're reading from verse 9. 
let us not be weary of well doing all the good things we've been doing in the past remember now as you became born again even before you were born again god gave you that good nature and now after you are born again you just loved to help people you loved to do good and then you came to the church and you are hearing the word of god and there was something in your heart i must draw something good there i must plant something good there i must elevate somebody there don't be weary whatever has happened your reward will come every good thing you have sown you will reap in jesus name let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not i will reap and i will not faint look at verse 10 in verse 10 as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men that's why the lord has lifted us up that's why he has saved us that's why he's a rock that's why he has lifted us up to higher ground and the rock that is higher than we are let us now do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith and then you go your way rejoicing and while you are rejoicing in the lord every good thing you are praying for today every good thing you have ever prayed for everything we lead us with pastors and i pray for you everything will be fulfilled wipe all the tears away and rejoice in the lord in psalm psalm 63 we're looking at verse 11 psalm 63 we're looking at verse 11 but the king shall rejoice in god the king shall rejoice in god he has been saying i'm following after god when my heart is overwhelmed then lead me to the rock that is higher than i and he says now i know what you do while the blessings are coming while the promises are to be fulfilled all i'll be doing now what will i be doing i said what will i be doing rejoicing somebody say rejoicing you'll be rejoicing in the lord in jesus name luke chapter 10 verse 20 luke chapter 10 we're reading from verse 20 it tells us notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven the joy that god counts you his own child the joy that god has forgiven your sin the joy that he has put your name in the book of life in heaven rejoice because your names are written in heaven look at philippians chapter 4 we're reading from verse 4 philippians chapter 4 reading from verse 4 it says rejoice in the lord always in church rejoice in the lord at home rejoice in the lord on your way rejoice in the lord in the morning rejoice in the lord in the night before you sleep rejoice in the lord rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice will you rejoice don't cry anymore will you rejoice don't weep anymore will you rejoice and while you are rejoicing in the lord good things will be following you all the days of your life in jesus name first thessalonians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 16 first thessalonians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 16 it says rejoice evermore rejoice evermore rejoice evermore verse 17 verse 17 says pray without ceasing you rejoice evermore and then you are praying without ceasing and in verse 18 it tells us in verse 18 in everything give thanks don't question in everything give thanks 
why am I Paul, a great apostle in this dungeon, in everything, give thanks? Why is it me, Peter, a great apostle? I am here and two soldiers are standing on guard and I cannot move even to go to uh, the conveniences. You know, they will have to follow me. Don't complain, rejoice and your miracle will come. An angel will come from heaven and then lose all those chains and take you out. All those iron doors will open in Jesus' name. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now we're going to pray and as you come to the Lord in prayer, no complaints, no murmuring, no questioning. You're just praying, oh Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And every good desire, the expectation of your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. I see blessings of God coming upon you as your eyes up. Rise up now, rise up now. I see the goodness of God coming upon your life. And I see as you are rejoicing, as you are praising the Lord, I see the stability, I see the security, I see the rock, I see the defense, I see the refuge, and I see all the prayers you have prayed all these many years. And I see the thing flowing into your life and overflow, and overflow, and overflow of the blessing of God upon your life. and then you will rejoice, you'll praise the Lord, you'll give testimony in Jesus' name. Open your mouth now and talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart.